When psychology was founded in 1879, everyone was operating under a theoretical framework called structuralism. And one thing that I think a lot of psychology teachers miss is the fact that structuralism was a really important intellectual movement in other fields as well. It began in linguistics, then really started to catch on when it was applied in anthropology. And then from there it spread to psychology, sociology, architecture, and even mathematics. So what is it? Well, structuralism is all about taking whatever it is you're studying and breaking it down into smaller parts. Imagine you've got like a really complex Lego building and then you take a few pieces off and you look at the characteristics of those pieces and you see how they all fit together. That's basically it. And that's what psychologists were doing with the human mind. So what are the building blocks of our psychological experience? Well, your sense of sight is a pretty big part of it. And then of course your other senses like hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling. And of course your thoughts are another big part of it. Okay, so we've got structuralism down and we've identified the structures of the mind, let's explore how they did their research. The person credited with the foundation of structuralism was Wilhelm Wundt. He began the first proper psychology experiments in his lab in 1879, and his method of research was called introspection. When you engage in introspection, you basically look inward and focus on your thoughts or on the raw data that's coming from your senses. To do these experiments, Wundt had some specially trained assistants who would do introspection and report the data to him. So they would explain sensations that they were feeling in as much detail as they could, and then they would apply a label to that experience. So the detailed description is what Wundt called immediate experience, and the label they applied to it was called immediate experience. Confusing, I know, but it is what it is. For example, an assistant might say, I'm experiencing some pain, a dull pain that like radiates from my jaw. That's the immediate experience. And of course, the immediate experience for that would be labeled toothache. Now, if you know anything about research methods, then you might be thinking there's a pretty big flaw in how he's doing things. You see, each of the people doing introspection might explain things in slightly different ways, which is a big problem when you're collecting data. One of Wundt's own students, this guy named Edward Titchener, recognized this flaw, and he left Germany to do his own research in the United States. And that is how psychology gets a foothold in America. Titchener's approach to research got rid of introspection and focused more on observing behaviors. And over the course of his career, his ideas started to depart further and further away from Wundt's. But both Wundt and Titchener were pretty successful during their time. Edward Titchener even wrote like 200 books during his career. But after they both passed away, structuralism kind of lost its popularity as a theoretical model. So the next big step forward for psychology came with the introduction of functionalism as a new theoretical framework. And that is the topic of our next video.